Hello everyone, I guess doing? Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day and today we're here with a video on buy, sell, hold for the USMNT as we head into the 2022 World Cup in Qatar. Going to be a ton of fun, really excited to watch the team. It is important to note that I will be breaking down buy, sell, hold these players compared to each other. So USMNT players relative to other USMNT players, right? You could compare, you know, USMNT players to other markets and say that this market's going to do this. And this is going to be much more intricate on who I would buy on this team and who I wouldn't not is the USMNT a good buy relative to anything else, because that's a really hard question to answer for a lot of reasons. I think the hobby is smart, but I also think it might be too smart. I really don't think there is a way to know what's going to happen with USMNT. If they do well, you'd imagine their prices go up. If they don't do well, you'd imagine their prices go down. But people sort of have that baked in. There's a lot of people I see in the market that are like, oh, the USMNT is all hype. But you know they'd love to collect them, but they don't want to, right? They're waiting. And that might be right. But if there's too many people waiting, then you never know. So there's no way to know what the greater USMNT market does. This is just going to be players to players. And again... There's really no way for me to know that, hence the whiteboard behind me. But I know it's a lot of fun. I'm going to share my picks and would love you guys to share yours as well in the comments down below. But let's go ahead and get on into it. So here we are. I have a bunch of different players' cards. I have buy, sell, hold, and I will pick one for every single player. I might like sort of hedge between two depending on the player and how I feel, but we'll see how this goes. So I'm going to go with the top 12 players that I feel like are relevant. I'm not going to include any goalkeepers or any center backs because honestly, I don't think those positions are relevant relevant if we're talking about you know USMNT potential in this World Cup and even probably long term because realistically not many of those players are collected in USMNT player past I mean Tim Howard gets some collectability maybe some of the legendary center backs do but very very small so I'm just not going to add them if you do like collecting them if you do like buying them if you do want to speculate by all means go ahead but I think it just is too much for the video so We'll start with Anthony Robinson. He is our left back. And personally for me, I think Anthony is a sell. Um, might be harsh, but I think that because, like I just mentioned, you know, very rarely do any defenders, you know, fullbacks ever get any sort of love, especially in the USMNT. So I don't see it. Um, I think if you're going to be worth buying or holding going forward as a fullback on our team, you're going to have to be someone that could be, you know, a very standout player long term. And I do think Anthony is competent right now and he is doing good for our team and he is on an upward trajectory at the moment. But there was a time where I was very unsure and I wouldn't have even considered it. So for that reason, I'm going to be cautious and say so. Then we go on over to Serginho Des, which is, in my opinion, a better fullback and more of a... I would say, hmm, hmm, I would say hold, but I would be very close to buying. Um, if he has a post-World Cup dip, I'll be all in on it. He doesn't have a ton of rookies. Um, for the cards that I have displayed for these guys, some of them are rookies, some of them aren't. Um, the Anthony Prism was, this Serginho Dest is not. Um, but even a card like this, it sells for really, really cheap. And his rookie autos, you can sometimes find them for like 40, 50 bucks. And he doesn't have a ton of rookie cards. So personally, I think that it is sort of a buy, but generally speaking, I think Serginho's a hold in his greater card market, just because right now he doesn't have solid footing at his club. Uh, he moved recently to AC Milan, so that's a little interesting. And for the USMNT, I do think he has something really, really special, and we do rely on him to create some attack for us. So personally, I think that he's more of a hold slash buy category, but I think it's the rare occasion when it comes to fullbacks for us. I wouldn't try to, you know, dig any deeper into that and maybe go after someone like a Joe Scally or I guess a DeAndre Yedlin maybe if you're trying to dig deep. Um, but yeah, I think he's a hold for me at this time. Now for Tyler Adams, this one is pretty easy. I think for me, I'm going to say he's a buy just because for me, I'm a big Tyler Adams guy. Um, in my opinion, he's our captain. I think he's at his best when he's our captain. I think he really offers, you know, a ton of different attributes to the team. Physical, but then also sort of the mental side of the game too. I think that he has it all covered. Um, personally, I think having him as a captain also lessens Pulisic of that burden of trying to do everything. So I think it's a good mix. Really depends on what you want to go for there. But I do think Tyler Adams is a buy because he doesn't get that much hype as is. Eunice Moose is a tricky one for me. Um, personally... I just find Moose's rookie year hard to get my head around in terms of products and what I should be going after and what I should care about. 
Musa as a player is very easy to understand in the sense that I think that he is a key piece of our midfield for a long time going forward. Um, at least he can be very, very easily because what he offers going forward is unlike anyone else we have on our team by far. I lied, Gio Reyna can compete with him on that. But generally speaking, he is far and away better than anything I've ever seen in our past. So for me, that is a huge step up and the kid's very, very young, potential moves in the future. So for me, I'm gonna go with hold on Musa. I just, buys a little little iffy for me because his stuff is pretty expensive as is for a USMNT midfielder that's only on Valencia and might not get all the minutes in the World Cup you don't know. You might be paying high, maybe you can get back in later, but personally I do think that Musa does offer some good med to long-term ability, so I do think he's a hold for now. Next up is Weston McKinney, and this is one where people call me a Weston McKinney hater. I am not, I'm just a realist on Weston, and I'm gonna go with Sal. I do think that Weston's a great player, however recently he's sort of been in a bad spell of form. And generally speaking, I think Weston's just been at a high bar. And I'll say this for another player later on in this video, but when you get a move from, I mean, Weston moved from Schalke over to Juventus, right? When you get that move, what's the next move? What's the next thing that happens, right? Either one, he's got to solidify himself for the USMNT, which I don't think he's been doing much lately. Now he does have good heading ability. He has a good ability to get onto a set piece and create a goal that way, which we are desperate for. So I do think in this World Cup, he might actually be a hold because I do think that he could pop off. But long term, I don't think that he's technical enough and maybe dedicated enough as far as I can tell to really warrant paying high premiums. Um, I say that because Weston, you know, I got in really, really early on Weston, like far long time ago. I loved him but I will say I'm just not too impressed and I don't know what the ceiling is for West and I'm sort of lost at the moment. And I think a lot of other people could be too soon. When he's at Juventus, when he's starting, you have that, you know, solid structure, but like Pulisic at Chelsea, if that starts to sort of deteriorate, a lot of skeptics come out and that's when, you know, things start to get bad. So for me, I think Weston's a sell, but you have to have someone as a sell. You can't, you can't buy everyone, you can't hold everyone, so. Weston for me is a sell. So now we get into the forwards. I'm going to start with the striker position because I don't like it at all. Um, just because simply put, there are four strikers that are competing for the striker minutes. Um, I'm only going to talk about three of them. Jordan P. Falk, I did not put on here. I would not buy Jordan P. Falk at all. I'm just getting it out of the way. Jesus Freira, much the same. Um, personally though, I'd hold. I mean, his prices aren't crazy. He just doesn't have a ton of premium products, so he doesn't have the massive, massive prices baked in. Some of the other guys that we'll talk about do. So for me, I think that Fred has a hold, because if he does do something, then I do think that the little bit he has to be collected could do well. Um, if he doesn't do anything, I do think that there is a lot of risk because he is a bit older. He hasn't gotten that move yet, and so you don't really know what you're getting, right? So for me, I'd go with hold on him. However, you know, if I'm someone that doesn't have any Freda, I probably wouldn't be buying either, so just nice and tempered with him. Next is Josh Sargent. I think that Sargent is a buy for this reason. In terms of the USMNT strikers, I only think there's one buy, and that's Sargent. Why? Because he's just cheap. He's he's attainable. He hasn't done much for us in this World Cup qualifying cycle, so there's not hype, there's not eyeballs, there's nothing baked in. So if he does something, great. If he doesn't do much, there wasn't a lot of people really on that bandwagon to begin with. And also, if you're going to take a stab at this striker pool, I think you should go for someone cheap that is also young enough to the point that they could have upside and maybe still be there in 2026 as our head guy. And Sargent can be that. I think Sargent can be that. I think Pepe can be that. I'm not as sure on Freira. I'm not as sure on Pfulk. And that's why I'd stay away from those two. Now, this is where we get on over into Pepe territory, which I, for me, I'm going to go sell on Pepe just because of this, right? Whenever there's a prospect that has prices baked in early on, they're always going to be overvalued compared to where they really should be in the market. Why? Because people just have a high initial cost on something. So they're going to be, you know, more likely to keep it up there rather than if something was really cheap at one point, it's harder to pull it up because people saw it really cheap. So to pull it up, it's like, is it really worth that? Is it really worth that? But when people already paid obscene prices, then it's easy to justify it, right? So Pepe, I think he has still some of that baked in, right? And generally speaking, I don't think the striker spot is an amazing gamble because you're picking from four guys for three games. And 
how's that going to go? Who knows? You know, I mean, one, you're relying on your ability to gamble on who the starting guy will be, but then you're also relying on your ability to guess that he will do good. And so there's just too many gambles for me to buy many of the strikers, especially if you're paying somewhat of a premium on them. Now we're on to Giovanni Reina. And if you're an avid follower of the channel, you'll know that this is my favorite USMNT player because I just think he has an immense ceiling. He also has been troubled by hamstring injuries for the last year and a half. So almost two years. So that is problematic. And that is part of what suppresses his prices. In my opinion, though, I'm going to go hold, um, but with some caveats, right? So I think that Geo is a good buy. But why I would be skeptical right now is Dortmund does still have five, maybe six games until the World Cup camp show up. So if you buy now, you do have that risk that in these five or six games, he could get injured. And given how much he struggled in the past with this injury, it is a risk as to whether or not he will be there and ready to go. So for me, I would say hold. But if he does get through these five or six games and you are someone that wants to get in, I do think that is an opportunity because then you know he'll be healthy for the World Cup. How many minutes will he get? How well will he do? You know, that's a gamble. But I think if you're going to gamble on someone, at least within the USMNT, and you're going to pay high prices, you may as well have the best ceiling available to you. And I think Geo offers that, which is why I keep him in the hold category. Next up is Brendan Aronson. And I'm just going to be real. I've recently sold my Brendan Aronson position, at least most of it, I still have some cards of Brendan Aronson, but not the high price parallels that I did before. But with Brendan Aronson, part of the reason I struggle is because of the guy that we just talked about, Giovanni Reina. They both play very similar positions, right? Brendan can play as a winger. He can play as a more attacking midfielder. That's the same thing Gio does, and I think Gio does that better. So if Gio is healthy, Brendan is a secondary piece, in my opinion. Now, on top of that, they're also fighting for a spot on the wing or in midfield. So on the wings right now, you have Wea and Pulisic. And then in the midfield, you have Weston and Yunus Musa. Now, Gio's probably going to get put in somewhere in there if he's healthy, which means where is Brendan going? Like, not only does he have to beat out Gio, he also has to beat out one of the guys that already has a position. So for me, it is hard to see Brendan Aronson really playing an impactful role. I do think that he will be a great super sub. I do see what he's doing at Leeds and how it's been good this year. It started off great, but now the Leeds experiment's gone downhill. Not really his fault. He's done well. But at the same time, like with Weston, when you've made that move, what's next? When you go from being on Salzburg to going to the Premier League, that's the move. That's where the prices boom. So now what? What's next? Where does he go? And that's what I don't know. I think Brendan Aronson is very much a system player. Um, I don't think that you can play him as versatile and as much as you'd like to in different forms. We see that with the USMNT. He's much less impactful than he is for club. And I think that's what it boils down to for the most part. He's not fast enough for a wing. He's not physical enough for an actual box-to-box -box midfield. So for me, I'm a sell on Brendan. Now, Tim Weah, Tim Weah, I love. I love Tim Weah, and this is part of why I don't like Brendan. A lot of people that like Brendan, I imagine they're trying to pin him in as a winger. That's how you kind of get him on the field in theory. But in my opinion, there's no way you can start him over Tim Weah. Tim Weah is part of the reason we qualified for the World Cup. He is just a spark plug of offense for our team. He's not been great for club, which is what, you know, sours some people because Brendan has been good for club. So they look at that. But this is national team. A lot of the reason we care about these guys is because of the national team. That's really what this is about. So national team performance does matter pretty big. And Tim Wea, I think that, you know, if there was someone non Pulisic that you're looking for is the guy that could really, you know, be a difference maker in terms of attacking threat on the USMNT, I do think Tim Weah is that guy. I think, personally, if I had to start him or Pulisic, I'm starting Weah every single day of the week. I don't know if that's a hot take, but I think what he offers our team is unlike anything else we have, and it's something we desperately need because our system does not work as much as we'd like it to, so we're going to have to rely on him, in my opinion. He's also very, very cheap, at least in terms of attacking prospects on the team. So for that reason, combined with the ability he has, I think it's a very easy buy. And then finally, Christian Pulisic. This one is actually one that I've, I've gone through every phase with Christian Pulisic. I've bought him, I've sold him, I've held. And personally, right now, I actually say buy. This one up on screen recently is one that I bought and one that I, I guess, consolidated into. And I thought it was an amazing buy. Personally, for me, Pulisic was at this stage initially where he boomed and then it was a matter of who else is even close to him, right? 
But now he's he's sort of stayed up here and just hung out. Giovanni Reina's come along, Weston McKinney's come along, Brendan Aronson's come along, Ricardo Pepe's come along, and he's sort of just stayed there. And I think at this point now, it does make sense for me at least that Pulisic can or should be higher than those guys at least most of them. In my opinion, I don't think it's as close as people like to believe it is. People just want the hope that they have the next big guy. And that's part of it. A lot of people want the next big guy. They want a rookie from the last year or two. Pulisic, you know, at this point, he's six years gone from being a rookie. It's not as fun. It's not as spicy. It's not as interesting. But for me, he is that guy. You know, he's already a legend for USMNT, whether you want to believe it or not. He hasn't done it at the World Cup, but he's already halfway up the leaderboard in terms of all-time goals. So you can very easily see him getting up there on top of there or near that list and already he is the first American to ever have won a Champions League he also scored late game goals for a Champions League winning team so he's done something unprecedented for us so for that reason alone I feel like he's already solidified the prices at least to an extent way more of an extent than anyone else on this list and for me that means Pulisic is a buy but yeah that is going to be it for me hopefully you guys enjoyed if you did make sure to leave a like We'd love to know who you are buying and selling going into the World Cup for the USMNT. And if you want to see more videos like this as soon as we go live, make sure to subscribe. But with that said, hopefully you have a wonderful day and uh, peace.